Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to teach you how to make this drawing of plumerias. Look how cool that is. All you're going to need is white drawing paper, a pencil, preferably 2B, a black eraser, a precision eraser, and it's a good idea to tape it down to something, and your paper blending stump. And this is what it looks like. Let's get started. To begin with, I'm only going to use a pencil and an eraser because I just want to get my line drawings in place. Um, so we're going to look down in this square first and spend a lot of time here first getting our line drawings. Um, so first off, um, we want to kind of think about what's happening in this direction. So we will have a petal kind of above the midline, creating a little square bit there, and then it goes in and that direction because it will continue over there. And then we will have a petal that comes in front and goes back and again heading in that direction with a little fold about here. So that leaves the rest of the space for a whole flower. Okay, so the center is going to be not in the center. Ha ha ha. Okay, so the middle of this flower is going to be about here. So then the petal will whirl back in this direction and copy that like a thumbnail moon. And then the other petal will start about here and kind of head around to the bottom. We've got to get that going on. And then this little fold will just be on this side. And then the center of this one is tucked in. Their head's really far over about almost to our edge, but not quite. And then also has a folded edge, which is fun. I chose these because they're kind of like pinwheels with little folds on them. They're so fun. Um, and then the next part of the center kind of comes up, is tucked behind and goes past this, almost all the way to the green. Whew, that went really far. And then it's folded on itself back to here. And then there's another part that's turned inside. So we can't see where it joins the center. We just see it kind of coming up and stopping right below the midline, kind of like a swoop of whipped cream and curves back to there. Very fun. And then this one will go behind that one. All right, so now we can finish up we have this bottom petal coming out and going behind there. This one goes behind there. And there's a little fold on this one. A little shadow of a detail there. And this is big and open right there. No flower there. All right. So now we get to head in this direction and find the rest of these petals. So this one's going to ride across the helping line for just a bit longer and then go beneath the helping line. And then its center, which is also not in the center, is going to be about here. So that's good to know because we can start here and go up and join that to the top area there. And the inside will come down and we'll revisit that in a bit because we need to come to here and go up and over and back. And then it has its little fold to there. This line that we have here is part of a petal that's going down. And then this one goes behind. We have our fold on this edge like that. And then this one is going to come all the way back towards the center. And the little fold comes back into the center. 
and then the rest of this petal gets lost behind there. Now this line is going to keep coming this way to the middle like that. And there is a fold and the fold is folded. How fun is that? Okay. And now we're back to this one so that we can get this little folded edge to there. Very fun. Okay. Um, now this one, we actually did the fold on the inside because something else is going to be happening there. So I'm going to start here and come down like that so that I have room for the other thing that will be happening there. <clears throat> All right. So next we have this fun bud that's going to start to the left. So it'll be about here and it'll diagonal up, diagonal up, get a little wider. Um, and then there's a little sliver where it's open and then I get to do this. To that sliver, this has a point on it kind of and goes out and back over. Then from here, it's going to go up very wide and back over with a little line in there. There's this fun little curly swoop in there like that. Ooh, cool. All right. Um, and then on this side, it goes over. And there's this folded part that we can see inside of this one so it's folded before it unfurls and then i guess it just doesn't all the way unfurl and then we have a petal reaching behind like this and this is the one that goes down to there how cool is that all right so we get to shade that a bit later so we have that one in place and now we get to go over here and see what all is happening on this side all right so this one is a petal that it touches here on the bottom edge and then the front edge flips up, which is very cool. And then does this kind of thing. And this goes under like this. And then we have another kind of sideways curling petal, just kind of keeps reaching around I don't know, almost looks like an amber sand or something. I don't know. And then this is the fold. And this is the fold over here. Um, and then this petal comes back into itself. And then there's another one that reaches over and has another kind of folded edge like that. And then comes inside to here. And this one goes up and makes a point and goes off the page. Point off the page. And we've got the bottom side. We've got that side. All right, cool. And then we need its little base on which it attaches to a stem that's going off the side. All right, then we have a little bit more on the inside happening. So about here, there is another petal going off that has a fold on it going that way. So we can't see what else is happening over there. And now we up here at the tippy top, we have a little bit of a reaching petal happening for another one that we will see very little of going this way and off the top. So. We have either three and one, or we have one, two, three and a half. Oh, well, I think we're going to be fine with that. And, oh, I think this one right here has another petal kind of coming down that we don't see the rest of. All right, so that's that, guys. All right, we have flowers. Now we have to deal with background, okay, because we already had this guy's little stem, and we got this guy kind of going to nowhere, but we need to think about where their stem. So the stem is, we've got one coming this way, and they're kind of woody. We've got one going this way, and it has a, like a ring. You gotta be a little smaller, a little rim on that. Um, this one must be joining somebody's. We'll just have it go down like this. There we go. One, two, three. This one's going that way. And then we just got random bits 
with little marks like this for the ones that no longer have blooms on them. They're just kind of left little sticks that are kind of interesting looking though. Kind of reminds me of lotuses a little bit. I mean, they're not long and skinny, they're more flat with little, but the little holes remind me of that. <clears throat> All right, maybe one more because those do look cool. There we go. All right, and yeah, so all of that stuff's happening kind of in that quadrant, which is nice to look at. I want to put some water drops on things. I know, well, spring, rain, you know, it seems like a good idea. Um, we might regret it in a minute, but we'll try it now. So I'm going to put a little raindrop here, a little raindrop there. I'm going to have... A bit of rain back there and um, how about a raindrop there okay and we'll have a little raindrop hanging under there and, oh and we'll put one right there and does that seem good Yep, so that's our drawing so far, and we will erase the plus sign, and we will get our paper stump out. I have erased the big plus sign, and I picked up my precision eraser and my blending stump. I got my pencil, my eraser, and then on your list it says sandpaper that's optional. Just get a fine grit, doesn't matter. This actually came with a drawing set, uh, but the point of this is to get a point, so if you need a point, you can sharpen these sticks with this uh, by rotating it while you're grinding it um, and you can get a point. The downside is I prefer when these are covered with graphite because um, it's kind of like having a nice well-seasoned iron skillet, cast iron skillet, because the brown blends nicely. I mean, the black graphite blends nicely. So I like them dirty. and So I just do my best not to mess up my point by holding them like this when I blend instead of having it up on the tip, flattening that tip. But that's what the sandpaper is for if you ever want to know. Okay, so I actually don't need to shade here. Well, I don't have to erase it either. Okay, so we have our flowers drawn and everything. And um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pencil, which is sharpened, and I'm gonna color everything that's not the flowers. So I'm just gonna go behind it. See if you hold it on the side. Then see how your pencil can color. Because if you use a tip, then that'll take forever or you'll have lines from your tip. So you wanna use this side. So see, so you kinda of let your pencil fall, you pinch it on the side, you angle it only slightly, and then we're gonna put in this darker color background. Now we're doing this because we want these flowers to appear almost white. I think this particular kind is like a frangy panty, so there's a little yellow or orange in the originals, but they're still mostly white. Um, so this will be nice to have this weight behind from the shadowing. Um, and it's just good to get this over with to begin with, because in a way this could be like the most tedious, like, oh, I can't believe I have to color that whole eight by 10 piece of paper. Um, but you'll just find this will be helpful. And then the side of your hand will get messy of your coloring and it'll get on things. And that's great too, because we do want this color to get everywhere and then we'll just take it off where we don't want it. So here we go around things between my little trumpet little things over here for the stems. And notice I'm not being super careful. If it gets on something, Right now, that doesn't matter because we're going to erase our highlights off later anyway. So, not a problem. Don't be too fastidious. You'll make this hard. Oh, whoops. It's true. That is not supposed to be colored, so I'll take that off. Um, but anyway, don't be too fastidious because you'll just make it harder on yourself. It'll be nice to have this color kind of on stuff. You'll see. It's much better to have graphite everywhere than to not have enough graphite. It's kind of like trying to downhill ski 
when there's no snow. You need the graphite in order to draw a graphite picture. So I'm just gonna keep putting that on there. And I'm not really gonna erase unless I make a big oops like I did over there. And let's see, do I need to think about directionality? No, not so much, not so much, not, not yet. I'm just gonna kind of mix it up so that it's not one way or the other. And obviously this wouldn't work so well if my pencil wasn't sharpened, right? Because I've got that whole millimeter and a half of lead sticking out there to get that nice edge on there. there. Anyway, I'm not trying to do solid black. We just want a nice dark gray throughout. <clears throat> we do want it in that little triangle. Okay. Phew. Okay. And that way, and this way, and that way. Have you ever seen a pencil go this way and that? Yes, a lot when Miss Elaine is doing this. So multiple directions. I've gotten it everywhere, and then I've made sure to change directions. If I went this way the first time, I went the other way. And I'll do a close-up so you can see. Sometimes I cut out of the lines. That's okay. We're going to leave that there. Not a problem. All right. So now I'm going to take my paper stump and blend all of that where I put it. Right in those spaces. Ah, oh, look how satisfying that is. Oh, my goodness. I love that. Way better than using our fingerprints. Can you imagine how tired your fingers would be in the end? Whew. So first just blending them exactly. The whole background. Yay. So again, I just kind of let it land, grab it, and that way I can change the angle of that tip and go in those pointy places like that. And I'm using the side, not the tip. I'm not up on the tip because it'll lose its little point there. I'm using, I'm using this side of it to blend. And push that into the paper. Delightful. And I'm just gonna keep doing that until the whole background that we colored is blended and smooth. So there it is with the whole background nice and blended. That looks really cool. Okay, um, so now all around the edges where we blended, we maybe lost the line of our flower. So notice I didn't go back and be like, I'm going to erase off the flower where it got gray on it. Now, nope, leaving that there, but I do want to make sure that I didn't lose the edge of my flower. So if it got faint from being blended on, now is the time to go around everything and draw back any lines that got faint from that paper stump running across it. So here I am making them all show up again. Everything has been outlined again. And so now I wanna spend some time doing some shading of my flowers. We we'll probably will come back to our background a little bit more later on, uh, but I wanna just keep moving forward with the shadowing uh, before we get to that part. So this is our big flower in the front and it is the one that I want to start on because I'm just right here and ready. So I'm gonna put some lines kind of right here and then I'm gonna put some shadow in there like that and kind of create a shadow up to the point and a shadow back next to the fold. And this time I am really being directional about my lines. So I'm doing this on purpose. So I go that direction. Okay, and then this time I'm going to go this direction. And I'm going to create a little and more shadow here and a little bit less. You know, I probably shouldn't have drawn that line for that shadow. So. I know I'm breaking my rule, but I don't want you to draw a line like that and then have it be lasting, a lasting effect 
So I am going to stop kind of where that line is, but if I draw a line, then it might be too dark. So I'm going to reverse that a little bit there, a little bit there, more under here, some right there, a little bit here, a little bit under there. And a little cross hatching for that part there, and a little bit right there. Let's get this one under here and down in that little crook. Oh, I need more shad. I need more little fold right there. And then a little part that doesn't have shad over there. Okay. Ooh, that was tricky. Oh, oh boy, this is fun. Okay, so then that goes like that. And there's a little shadow there. That was very complicated. I have a feeling that has to open up later and be something else. Okay, a little bit there. I think there's a dessert called a frangipani too. I know I'm not saying that right. I know my Kentucky accent, which normally hides so well, is coming out with that one. So I'm going to have to listen to a pronunciation guide on that. I just know it. And... Okay. Oh, we just have our little bud left up here. Okay, so it's the darkest in this crevice right here. There is a shadow here. That line's okay, because that's kind of the fold in it, in case you're wondering, since I got rid of that other line before. All right, now let's look at these little stems down here. What do we need to do for these guys? Okay, looks like... Well, we're not shocked to find that these little things are darker in those little holes. And then we kind of got... And we're also not shocked to find that it's darker down in these little sheaths. And the light's hitting those circly things. Okay. Just making sure they're well outlined. Okay, they're not the main, they're not the main event, but took, we've taken pretty good care of those guys. All right, so we have our pencil shadow lines in place. I need a little bit more here. I'm going to put another raindrop right there. And then a little shadow there. All right. Okay, paper stump time. <clears throat> so when we paper stump, we want to blend it in the direction that we've colored. So if we've colored in this direction, we blend it in that direction. If we've colored in this direction, we blend in that direction. 
So you want to blend where it is and in the direction that we put it there. Like this. So blending that direction, that direction. Everything is blended and you'll notice that we pretty much have the same color everywhere. So we're going to have to do some things to make it more like dynamic, like poof, brights and darks and stuff. Um, and so all we did was kind of mix stuff where stuff was. Okay, so now let's take our paper stump that has graphite on it and let's go in all of these little raindrops so that we can do something with those in a bit. You don't think about raindrops as being black but we have a lot of reflection so that's why we need to do that all right and the side of your hand should look like that if it doesn't um i don't know how you did that uh, but um but yeah the side of our hand will look like that and i'm just going to go ahead and kind of rub everything kind of force everything to be slightly gray yeah obviously you don't want to eat mcdonald's french fries while you're doing this because then the grease from the fries would get on your paper uh, but i started with clean hand clean and dry hands when i did this so this should be good and then kind of like in the eraser bits now you may be eager to get to like your highlights on these flowers but not yet not yet we're going to collect some more graphite on our surface before we get to that um, so now that I have everything kind of shaded where I want it shaded and dark, now I want to think about the background a little bit more. And I'm going to put some large kind of waxy, tropical looking leaves in the background because I think that will play nicely against this empty thing. So he's, he'll have a flat side and a front side and I will just kind of keep like a fan design going in this background. So it's far away. It looks big, but it's probably even bigger in real life. Um, and I'm just kind of creating that in the background, that deep, dark, waxy, tropical leaf kind of shape. And we'll have them nestle in next to each other like that and that'll make for a nice nice background so i have like four i think back there darkness down here so i might just kind of lay in another one down low to represent something else happening behind there all right so now i have five total so kind of interesting um, so in those places now, I will use the tip and lots of repetition to really get it quite dark inside those leaf shapes. And see, I'm using still not my hardest pressure. If I use my hardest pressure, I don't know if you've noticed, but it will get really shiny. We don't want to get really shiny. We want to get dark without getting shiny. So I have to go fast and use repetition, or I could go slow and use repetition. Uh, you know, you decide what's best for you, but I'm filling that in and then I might paper stump it, see how I'm doing, and maybe add a little more until we get those leaf shapes as being the darkest, darkest, darkest places in our background. And that'll be really interesting. So let's do that on all of those now. 
There. Now that's what it looks like after I've put in those big tropical leaves in the background. There's like four up here and one really big one there. And I've colored them to be the darkest. I can color using repetition without it getting shiny. Because if you just press really super hard, it'll just get shiny and then it won't read as dark. And I've used my paper stump. And I really, really, really hope that you've trusted me and not been fastidious about erasing stuff. Um, and you want to try to get it to be really this dark. Uh, because now we're ready to get our precision eraser. And you really won't get as dramatic of an effect if you don't have a lot, a lot of pencil there. And have it thoroughly blended and even have really dirty hands that got everything kind of messy. Um, trust me, messy will have a more dramatic effect with this eraser. If you haven't, definitely go back and get it darker before this step right here. So pause, darker, and then return. Okay, even I went back and made some parts darker. Also, I added a drop of water there, a drop of water there, a drop of water there. And I think we had these already. And I just made sure that wherever they were, that I had put a little bit of darkness in those drops of water so that we can make them more exciting here in a second. So, all right, darker, darker. All right, last chance. The side of my hand is still very dark. I'm gonna scooch it this way so I can start here. I am right-handed, so I'm gonna go from here that way. That way, if I get this on stuff, it won't matter. Um, but if you are left-handed, you could wash your hand and dry your hand because you'll be going over it like that. Okay, so now you know, all right. But I am not gonna wash my hand, so I'm gonna start over here. All right, so I've got my precision eraser. I'm going to erase the outline of this petal. And notice that I move it in this direction so I can get that nice crisp white edge. If you do not get a crisp white edge, that means you don't have enough on there to erase. So that's what I was talking about. It has to be gray enough that when you go to erase, it makes a nice dramatic effect. All right, then I'm gonna come down the folded edge. Oh, so good, so good. And then I'm gonna erase the bottom of that raindrop like that. Oh, so good, so good. All right, then this folded part, about half of it will be nice and bright. The other half will have a shadow edge. This part here. It's like drawing with our eraser instead of drawing with our pencil. It is very satisfying. Then I go across this top edge here, all the way to there. And then we're going to erase little parallel lines to about there. Look, it just glows because we had enough on there. We're going to go back on this edge here. See, aren't you glad I didn't erase that like smear from my hand? It made it perfect for this. Gonna go above that. Gonna go below on the edge of the curvy part that's folded. And I'm gonna erase on the edge. Nice. All the way back to the middle. Woohoo! All right, then my edge here. It's like a little scoop. And then this is going to erase up, 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 up into that area right there. It's the brightest petal we've had so far. I'm going to go from the center along this edge and the back edge. Must be some reflected light for that to happen. All right, then I'm going to go on this whole curvy part here. Just like that. And on this edge, like that. All right, so see how that stands out? You have a more dramatic effect because of the shadow. I'm gonna put a little bit right there 
Awesome. Let's do the nice bud now. So we know the curly part is very white. So we're going to erase all inside of that. I'm going to add a little extra curl to it. Oh, lovely. Okay. Then this fold on the petal has the most bright edge there. And then the outside edge against that background and then some little lines come in there. Very cool. All right, then we're gonna start on our stem for a line and follow all the way up to the tip on that. The little tip has a little white ball there, so I'm gonna erase too much, and then I'm gonna draw that little ball back. There we go. Press that. And then I'm gonna erase a little out of the inside of the little water droplet. And I'm gonna skip across this side and erase like that. Okay, cool. All right. Now I'm going to this one, and we have a light edge here, and this whole thing here is a light edge to about there. Must be some cast light upon it. And then we've got a line and a line, and we're going to erase a little smile in the bottom of that raindrop, or moisture drop, and then we're going to add line on that. Now inside of this flower petal in here it is darker so I'm going to add a little more darkness. Oh I could do that with our, pen, our pencil. Okay I won't get carried away because that's the next step after this so I'll, I'll refrain from doing more of the drawing. But we were close up and we could see so clearly. I know we will later too. So we're going to follow out here and down and then this is going to have little feather lines kind of going in that direction this part right here is the brightest whitest part so i'm just going to erase it again get very bright right there okay all right and i'm just gonna do a little striation kind of right there yeah all right that looks good way more striking and now we're going to go to this flower. This flower, we will erase the tip all the way to where it joins there. On this side, all the way to where it joins there. And then we're going to do striation lines like that. All right, then this foldy part, nice and bright there. Inside the foldy part, nice and bright to there, and then striations down like that. This overlay part doesn't have a bright edge on it, but in it, we're just gonna erase a little bit inside. So it's a softer erase. For that glowy edge and then there'll be a soft little point there all right and then our water droplet will be white near the edge out there and then we gotta shade it back in as it drips off the petal like that from there okay and uh, now we're going back down to here the edge is glowy. The water droplet is glowy there and glowy behind. So we're going to add like that. And then we're going to have more striations going this way. Then the 
edge of this petal is bright to there, and then there's a bright edge here, and then there's a glowy edge on the bottom to about there. And this one is glowy to there. And then it's okay to draw this shape with your eraser. Because I know before I was like, oh, no, don't draw it. It'll be too sharp. But this is a sharp, glowy brightness of the light hitting that. And then there's a glowy smile in the water droplet. And there's a white edge. Like that. And then an edge on the back and the front of the foldedness there. Yay. Okay. Then we have a glowy edge on this petal and a glowy smile on the bottom. So I had to erase too much and draw back the glowy smile like that. Same with this one, glowy smile. Uh, and then dark inside okay then I get to draw the shape goes that way that way and really erase right there and then this direction is straight right and then this part right here very white yeah all right then we have this part here very white, and this part here, striated. Oh, that looks cool. Maybe a little more striations in there. Yeah. Okay, all right, we're working our way up. Now we're going over to this guy right here. And he will be very bright on this lip here. Very bright on this part here. Very bright highlight there and there. Then this curvy thing here is very bright. This little pointy part here is very bright. The water droplet is very bright. And this part that sticks out like this is very right all the way down and then we need some striations going that way and the glue is that way this edge is very bright and the tip is very bright oh and this part right here is very bright very fun okay now we've got this one back in the back so Looks like he's pretty bright right there. And that he's very bright along this edge. And then this one is very bright on that edge. Okay, we've got all our edges. Now we'll zoom back out. Boop, 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 boop. And then we'll decide what to do for these stems where like petals used to be. So these are flowers that were broken off. And so I think what I want to do is get these little edges nice and bright by doing that. And I'm going to have to add the dark little holes back in or seeds or whatever those things are. It reminds me of the seeds in the lotus. So yeah, that's good. That's good. And then we just want to randomly put some glowy edges for where the light is hitting them kind of randomly. Because it has to make its way through the canopy here to hit them. By the way, these leaves are not necessarily leaves that belong to a plumeria. We just recognize they live in a tropical location. So the tropical leaves is a really good design element. Oh, I forgot this little raindrop, water drop. Okay, raise him out. Make him nice and bright. Put a little shadow inside. All right, 
So now we have all the delicate shading. You might like it just like that. But next, I'm going to sharpen my pencil really sharp to do some line work. All right. So this is the part of this lesson that will be similar to a micron pen because we're going to have a really, really bold line now. So I've got my pencil. Well, it won't be that bold because we got too much going on. Um, so I might re-outline things and then I might put little cross-hatching lines in places that would have been more of a subtle shadow if we were just doing gentle work. Uh, but because I wanted to have that feel of if we were coloring with a micron pen, you can see I am using repetition and lines and maybe some cross hatching in some places uh, to create that kind of look, maybe some dots, look at these dots down in there. Very cool, maybe wrinkle stuff up so it's not so organized. Okay, yeah. Got this overlaying that, so I'm gonna have that be shadowier. Maybe redraw that edge a little bit. Got that middle doing that kind of star design there. Get this edge where they come together. A little more interesting, a little more shadow maybe in the water droplet. Some directional lines. See, fun, fun, fun. All right, gonna keep doing that sort of thing. Paying attention to the, the metals of these flowers. 